Y'all know that saying that behind every joke there's some truth to it. I wonder if those rules apply here because I kind of sort of feel like they just might. But YouTube, team, keep it clean. Happy Monday. What's up, baby? It's the start of a new week. And um, this week, I just really uh, I think I, I just really want to focus on being more grateful, um, being more appreciative this week and just really moving forward in life in general, because um, we like social media. Social media can show you a lot of good stuff, show you a lot of fun stuff, and show you a lot of different things that people may be doing, but it can also show you a lot of bad stuff, and it can uh, expose a lot of bad situations that people may find themselves in. Um, and it's unfortunate, but it does give you a reminder that people around the world, they're going through so much stuff. Uh, and we may not even realize because we may be in our own little bubble and whatnot, um, but it's a lot of people that's going through a lot of stuff. So just be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for who you have. Be grateful for your situation. Just be grateful in general. But anyway, uh, Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey is somebody who is known for his outlandish takes on Twitter. And I know he... I ain't believing when he said in, in, a, in a recent presser that, oh, during the football season, somebody has my phone. So, so somebody is so somebody logged into my account. So that's not me tweeting that stuff. I tell them what to tweet and then they tweet, oh, all right, Marlo, I don't believe that at all. But, and, and, but even still, that would make both of y'all bad because you the one coming up with the bad stuff and then you telling them and then they decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to tweet this for you. So they approve of it. So that's, that ain't no good. But anyway. Because if Marlon told me some of the stuff that he be tweeting, I'd be like, hold up there, buddy. You ain't tweeting that, man. Delete it. Like, you're not even saving that in no drafts. But something that he did tweet out last night um, was interesting. It was funny, but it was interesting when you, like, really think about it. Uh, he tweeted out some pictures of himself at the Pro Bowl. Um, and then Cozy Hops, Roberto on Twitter, he asked Marlon Humphrey, did you do any recruiting, Marlo? Because we know Marlon Humphrey, hey, you know his famous saying uh, on, in the offseason, hashtag come to the Ravens. And I'm sure he might have been talking to some people, uh, hey, come to the Ravens. Like, and the Pro Bowl is a, is a place where you can do that. Like, the players can, you know the players talk amongst each other. And you, look, and just to be real with you. Teams are not supposed to talk amongst each other, but you know they don't go by all that, the trade deadline and the starter free agency. And all. They don't do that. You know they be breaking the rules. They just keep it on the low. But anyway, um, like remember Calais Campbell? Remember the Pro Bowl in uh, the 2019 season? And with Lamar's all cool, Calais Campbell and stuff. Who, who, what team was Calais Campbell on the Jaguars back then? But anyway, a couple years later, boom! A couple years later, boom, Calais Campbell ended up getting traded to the Ravens. And he talked about being at the Pro Bowl with some of the Ravens. And like, oh, the vibe was good and whatnot. So it happens. But anyway, uh, so Cozy Hops asked Marlon Humphrey, did you do any recruiting, Marlo? And his response was funny because he said, every time I try, I'm met with, are y'all going to pay Lamar? And, you know, that's a real question. That is a real, legitimate, great question. Because that's what everybody wants to know. Now, of course, with, with, with Marlo tweeting it, um, it seemed like he tweeted it in jest. It seemed like he tweeted it, oh, ha, ha, la, 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 I'm just playing around. I'm just joking. But again, behind every joke, there's some truth to it. And I'm sure people ask that because the media wants to know. The fans want to know. <laughs> the Ravens. <laughs> Ravens want to know Lamar wants to know hey what's gonna happen with Lamar Jackson and when you think about this angle of it you think about this side of it uh with the recruitment process with players and obviously not just recruitment by Marlon Humphrey, Humphrey but recruitment uh from the Baltimore Ravens themselves say for instance they don't pay Lamar Jackson they end up trading him for draft picks and da -da -da -da. say for instance that happens how could that impact the recruitment process in Baltimore? How, can, how could that impact free agents in Baltimore? How could that impact guys that uh, the Ravens want to sign and bring on to the team? How could it impact guys who are already on the team? That's just something that I think about from time to time. Not often enough um, because we're not there yet, but it could weigh heavy. Think about free agency right now, free agency uh, and by the time free agency rolls around, the Ravens will have either done one of three things. 
they will have either signed Lamar to a long-term deal um, or they will either place the franchise tag on Lamar or they will have either tr traded Lamar Jackson to another team. One of those three things will have happened by the time free agency starts on, I think, what, March 14th, I want to say. Um, so we'll know when we know. Uh, but I'm not expecting it to be the long-term deal at that point. We'll see. Crazier things have happened, so we won't know till we know. But say, for instance, Lamar Jackson is franchise tagged. And then so free agents are looking at that like, oh, uh, y'all franchise tag Lamar. And I know y'all been in this negotiation war for a while now uh is he gonna stay is he gonna go look ravens i, I like y'all i like y'all organization i respect it but i really ain't trying to sign there if i, I like especially a, like a, an offensive player even a defensive player possibly but more so offensive guys like uh, i ain't really trying to sign there if uh, i don't know lamar gonna be there now i don't even know who y'all quarterbacks about to be so i mm, now nah, i'm good i'm straight then you even think about potential trade targets, especially trade targets who got a no trade clause so they can really dictate where they go, whoever that could be. But anyway, they could look at that situation. Ravens could put in an offer to the team and they could be like, all right, look, we, we want to bring him on. We want to bring on that wide receiver. We want to trade for that wide receiver. Bring him on. And then that wide receiver with that no trade clause, he like, mm, like who, who going to be throwing me the ball? <laughs> no, I, I'm good. No, I'm straight, man. Y'all don't got that situation locked up. No thanks. So it could just, since, since the whole situation is in limbo, it could impact how free agents feel about coming to the Ravens. Then you could think about people even on the Ravens now. You know, like that locker room, a lot of people in that locker room after the season was over, um, they, they really went to bat for Lamar. Marlon Humphrey was definitely one of them. Um, but they they spoke highly of Lamar. Uh, Marlon Humphrey did. Calais Campbell did. Oh, J.K. Dobbins obviously did. Hey, <laughs> if we, we would have had Lamar, we would have won, baby. No offense to Snoop, of course. Um, but yeah, they 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 rock with Lamar in that locker room. Um, so with that being said, how would that look if and and they all know that it's a business, but still, how would that look if the Ravens did not sign? Lamar Jackson how could that impact if, if they got rid of him how could that impact just the vibe in the locker room because that would be one of the biggest shakeups that the Ravens have had in that locker room in a long time long time obviously biggest shakeup uh Ray Lewis retiring that was huge but it was expected because he let everybody know hey this is my last ride he came back with a super shredder arm and said, hey, this is my last ride. That, little, that, 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 that thing was kind of cool, though. And then he, then he changed his face mask, too. He changed his helmet and all that. I was like, all right, Ray. Ooh, that was crazy. Remember when, remember when he uh, came out in the Colts game? Ooh, man, I remember I was crying so much. I was bawling when he came out. Did the, the, the squirrel dance first, Ed Reed. He was pointing to the back like that. I said, oh, man, here you go. I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it. But anyway, um, that was a huge shakeup when Ray retired, but... That was expected. It, 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 he wasn't in limbo. And then when they didn't bring back Ed Reed and he went to the Texans, then the Texans cut him. Then he went to the Jets. Then Ed Reed was like, you know what? I, I, I'm out of here, man. Get me out of here. So um, that, that, was, that was a big shakeup, too, because it's like, man, Ed Reed. When they traded Anquan Bolden after the Super Bowl season, that was a big shakeup because uh, it was like, man, when Torrey Smith, when he uh, didn't resign, they offered him, but their offer was lower than the 49ers offer. He went to the 49ers. That was a big shakeup, especially for me because, again, I remember being in Publix. I was in Publix. I was getting ready to get my wife some flowers, and I forgot what else I was getting. Then a notification came on my phone. My eyes started getting watery. I love Torrey Smith, man. Love Torrey Smith. But anyway, um, so those were some big shakeups over the years, and then, of course, a couple years ago, well, man, four years ago now, when they officially traded Joe Flacco to the Broncos. They officially traded him. It was like, whoa, it's like it's real. And, but we knew that that was on the way, though. Joe Flacco wasn't in limbo. When, when, when it was official that Joe Flacco wasn't in limbo, it wasn't even when Lamar took over as the starter. It wasn't even when Joe Flacco was healthy enough to come back and Lamar remained the starter. But it was the playoff game that cemented it. Like, all right, that is officially it with Joe Flacco because they didn't put him in the playoff game. 
They didn't put him in there. They could have. I'm glad that they didn't, but they didn't put him in that playoff game. And that was when it was like, oh, yeah, they, it's, it's officially done. That's a wrap. And then they traded him a couple months later. But this Lamar Jackson thing, if he was to be traded, that would shake up that entire locker room like crazy. So how would that impact them? Well, in a big negative way, in my opinion. Because that's Lamar. Like that's, It's not just any old player. It's not just anybody. And it ain't no offense to anybody else who's in the locker room. But that's Lamar who completely like changed everything about the Ravens. Changed the trajectory that this team was headed. Changed how people looked at them. Changed their approach to some stuff. Just changed the entire vibe in that locker room. Because I remember watching Ravens games and it, it, they were just like, the vibe was just so off. They didn't have no life to them. It was like, what is going on? Seemed like they were just showing up just to show up. And you know what? Let's, let's just get it over with. That's what it seemed like. In 2018 and all, that's what it seemed like. It seemed like they were, they were just going through the motions almost. Lamar comes in, boom, injection of life, energy. So if something would have happened and they traded him, I, I think that would take a lot of energy out that locker room, a, a whole lot. And, whew, and it's a real possibility. It is a real possibility that that happens. But that can impact so many guys. That can impact so many guys on them deciding whether they want to resign with the Ravens or not. Um, it could it could end up just yeah impacting if they want to stay. They could end up being like you know what, I want out. I want to be traded. And then on top of that, I think that it could make the Ravens have to spend even more money on especially offensive players, depending on how things go. Because they could be like, oh, oh, Lamar ain't gonna be there. No, I'm I'm I don't want to go there. So Ravens may have to offer them even more just to entice them. To come to the Ravens But we'll see We'll see Like I said We won't know till we know But I just thought That was very interesting uh, From uh, Marlon Humphrey About Lamar Jackson Because again Behind every joke There's some truth to it And There will definitely Be plenty of people asking And there will continue To be plenty of people That ask the same question That we all want to know Are the Ravens Gonna pay Lamar Or is he going to be 